Hey everyone, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming. I hope that you're having a wonderful day. In this video tutorial, um, we're gonna do some fun stuff with embroidery hoops. I'm gonna tell you where everything came from. I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks and show you a few ideas. And then uh, there's so much that you can do with these that I think we need to have a part two and a part three and a part four and a part five. Anyways, I'm glad that you're joining me today to play with embroidery hoops. And um, if you have questions as we're going along, let me know that in the comments. Um, feel free to ask, you know, any kind of question. And um, if you like this video, I would love it if you would sprinkle it. Um, tell me where you're watching from. And I was explaining yesterday on my video that the more you engage with me, I mean, it can be silly. You can just say ice cream cone or hi, <laughs> or give some little hearts or something. The more you engage with me and this page, DIY Dreaming, the more likely you are to get served my um, crafts and all the projects. So this is about the latest in a really long time that I've come on. And the reason why is because I have had a hard time I have so many ideas and there's so many different ways that you could go with this <laughs> that I just haven't been able to get it done. And I always want my crafts to be a little something more, to have something extra, to be extra special. So um, we'll definitely have to have a part two, three, four, and five. Okay, so these embroidery hoops right here, this is a three inch, this is a seven inch, wait, this is a four inch, three, four, six. I think there's an, I have some eights. This I believe is an eight. Oh no, this is an eight right here. And then 10. And all of these guys came from Walmart. Uh, they're around like $2 a piece up to maybe $2.99, so they're not expensive at all. This big guy was a Goodwill find. I found it and I grabbed it immediately. I wasn't sure what I was gonna even do with it. Um, and I don't have a project ready for this today, but um, we will do something with that for sure. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be using stencils to decorate and then to add a little extra to the project. And the first thing I wanna show you is this. I did this before I came live. This is how you can use um, an embroidery hoop to make a, um, a pocket to store whatever you want in there. And these are some of our pulled string burlap flowers. So I just have a little pair of scissors. I would put a notepad. I have my glasses hanging on here. And the front, where is it? Right here. Okay, so this is burlap that's inside of the embroidery hoop. And then I have a piece of painter's drop cloth. I'll hold it closer so you can see. With a little uh, edge of ribbon, or of lace from Walmart. Um, over the top and inside of the hoop also. And then I stenciled this little square right here and it's just tacked on with a little bit of glue. And this is gonna go in my um, house right next to the phone as you enter the house. And I think it's gonna be super cute. So what do you guys think about that? You can make these so they hang on a wall. You can make them big or small, whatever you like. You can jazz them up however you want. You don't have to use burlap and painter's drop cloth. Um, on the back of this, I just tacked everything down with a little hot glue. So that is one fun use for embroidery hoops is to uh, make pockets. And this stencil and the black, uh, I used chalk paste on this are from Magnolia, and I did pin my link right there, if you wanna go look. This is part of the force, the quads that are called Proverbs 31 quads. And it says, she is clothed with strength and dignity. Don't you love that? Okay, let's set this guy back here. All right, and we are actually gonna do one, but I wanna show you some ideas before we do that, okay? 
Um, the next thing I want to show you is how easy it is to make ornaments. I mean, seriously easy, and we'll put a couple of these together. I'm using two different size hoops for this. I'm using the teeniest one, and then the next size up, okay? And this is one that I have all ready to go. I worked on this before we came live. Isn't that cute? This fabric right here is not painter's drop cloth, in case you're wondering. It is just this canvas fabric that I bought at Walmart. They have it on a bolt. Um, it was around $5.95 a yard, and I bought one yard, and I don't know how long I'll be able to use this um, forever <laughs> because I'm just using it for small craft projects. But this is something that is good to have on hand. It's thick, that um, chalk paste does not go through it, and it's it's sturdy, um, so I definitely recommend that you get some canvas uh, for your crafting. So what I did before we came live is I, I stenciled, I ironed it first, that's important, um, so it would be completely nice and smooth, and then I stenciled with, these are the, um, the cute, oh my gosh, these are so dang cute. They are um, little, where are they? Snowflakes, all different kinds. It's a whole set, and I love every single one of them. I really love this one. Um, and I think there's one or two more. Anyway, so I just put my stencil on the canvas, used, a, again, a little black chalk paste. And voila, and these are gonna look so cute on my tree. So let me show you how they go together. Um, when I was deciding what size of a hoop I wanted to use, I just laid my hoop down, and I didn't do a good job cutting it out, dang, so we might be kind of close or slightly off center. Um, but I just laid my hoop down to get an idea to see if the stencil would work inside of it. And this is gonna be the little, little one. Okay, and then all you're going to do is you're going to, your hoop is going to come like this in case, I know a lot of you guys are, have done embroidery and you know all about these things, but I'm guessing that some of you guys don't. You haven't ever even touched one of these and they are so fun. Um, so they come like this and this little top part here will be screwed in really tight. And the first thing you're going to do is you're going to unscrew it, but look, not all the way just the majority. I still have some of that tread or thread in there, okay? And then you're gonna take your, let's come down here. You're gonna take your um, inside piece of the hoop. The outside has this on it, okay? And you're going to lay your project over the hoop. Yep, this is gonna be super close. And stretch your hoop out and you're gonna fit it snug on over the top, okay? And I was right, <laughs> this is off center because I cut my, I, I had too much on my mind and I didn't cut it good, anyways. So we won't assemble this one, I'll do a new one, but we'll assemble the little one, but you get the idea. And then you tighten your little device back up. Okay, let's do the little one because I don't think I messed that up too bad. Um, so here's the, where is the rest of the hoop? Here it is. I went ahead and I put some beads on it. Um, and it's going to have this blue like tape on it. I don't know why they do that, but you want to take it off. So I need to get some pliers out. Can you see that? And Or some little needle nose things and pull that off. But I did open the, um, the little screw so it's as wide as it can be. And I'm just gonna lay the small piece down, put my piece of fabric over the top. Well, dang, did I do the same thing with this? I hope not. And as you're fiddling around, you'll figure out where is your, where it should be. Oh my word, I think I may have. This is the trickiest part. 
It would be easier if I hadn't gone ahead and put the beads on it. So these snowflakes are so cute. Let's just pretend like we're gonna put something on the bottom here, okay? And that it's not completely off center. I wanna show you the next step. So the first thing is you're gonna tighten the outer hoop. Whoops, I'm going the wrong way. So that the outside piece is super snug around it. Oh, I have this one project to show you guys. I can't wait, you're gonna love it. Okay, and then you've got all this mess back here. You can either fold it in and glue it on the inside, but honestly, it's easier to just take your scissors, you're gonna go around a couple times, two or three times, and trim off the part that is sticking out. Let's go around at least once so I can show you how you're gonna come back. Okay, so once you go around once, you can see it's still gonna look messy. So you just wanna take your scissors, and if you have a pair of little ones, it's easier, and you're just going to go around again, super close to the edge, and just snip off those last little pieces so it'll be better okay so well darn that was disappointing but I mean I didn't lose anything because this fabric was not expensive at all and um, I can just stencil two more snowflakes I'm gonna do a whole bunch of these for my Christmas tree I love this natural look all right so the next thing that I want to show but this was the one that actually worked <laughs> Isn't that cute? And I just used some of this. I just got a new one because mine was almost gone. This is from Walmart and it's called Natural Polished Hemp. This is the best stuff because it's smooth and it's easy to get it through your beads. So I just did a small neutral, a black, and a, a medium size neutral. And then I just put a knot at the end of my little hemp and that's where I'll put it on the tree. Okay, so um, what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be doing, did I decide it needed to be an 8 inch? Or could it possibly be this one? We're going to do this one. This is a 6 inch hoop. So you're going to take your little label off and unscrew it. So that's loose, but don't go all the way. And we're gonna do a stencil that's part of the Christmas quads that says joy to the world, all right? You're going to stencil first, and you really do want to let it dry, but we'll, we'll look at it and pretend and try to be careful. Okay, so I'm using part of the, um, these are the Christmas quads. This one says a child is born. This one says joy to the world. Um, this is cute. Deck the halls. And oh, here, silent night. Okay, so we're gonna do the joy to the world and I'm just gonna put it in the center of this piece. Fabric. So how are you guys doing? I didn't say any of my normal stuff. How are you? Where are you watching from? Thank you guys um, so much for joining me. Um, feel free to sprinkle if you would like to and feel free to ask me questions if you want. Okay, I didn't fuzz this. Do you know why? I didn't fuzz it because it makes no sense to fuzz uh, stencil on cloth and then put it on cloth. This is cloth, so you don't need to fez it beforehand. And also I experimented and it is pretty thick and it's not gonna bleed through to my table. So we're just gonna take a little black chalk paste. I do like for sure how the chalk paste goes on this canvas fabric as opposed to the painter's drop cloth. Um, the painter's drop cloth doesn't give as crisp of an image and this seems like it does. So we're just using black chalk paste. I pinned a link at the bottom of this page. 
I'm going to take a blob and I'm just going to start at the top. And I try not to make too many passes over the stencil area because the more you do that, the more likely you are to push it under your stencil or to put too much on or to, for me, to go outside of the lines. And there's no recovery on a light colored fabric with a dark colored chalk or ink. Okay, I'm just taking the big, big blobs off and we'll take this off. Wow, this is so crisp. Um, look how good that is. Okay, so then the next step would be that we would put our, I would ideally wait till this was completely dry. I'm just gonna try to be super duper careful. And I like to have this, um, this little twisty thing off to the right side for whatever reason. And I want it to be at the top and pretty centered, okay? So this is what I'm gonna get. And let's tighten it up. And then we'll roughly clean up the back and then I'm gonna show you fun, a couple of fun ideas of things that you can do. Okay, let's try not to mess the whole thing up. Let's just do it very... I would um, be much more careful if um, I wasn't doing this live. I'm, try I'm wanting to show you something. Okay, at this point, there's lots of different things you could do. You could use a ribbon through here to hang it up. You can add embellishments to it like little round beads or um, if you have some pretty like, this is this uh, ribbon that I have that has leaves on it, that would be pretty on it. But what I'm gonna do with this one is I have some of these little, um, they're, they're faux, I'm not sure what this is, faux, Faux, uh, it's not ivy, it's, uh, I don't know, jasmine or something. I'm not sure. If you know what this is supposed to be, tell me in the comments, okay? And you could add your stencil project to a wreath that's exactly the size of the project or that is a little bit bigger and you can also add the wreath on the top, but I don't want to smudge it. So that's one fun thing that you can do. Um, another fun thing that you can do is you can add your project to a framed piece of art. Let me clean this one up and then I'll show you what it is. It's really, love this one. This is one of the Proverbs 31 stencils. And on this one I used um, black and I use the magnolia green chalk paste and I am really loving this green color Okay, let's say that's Good for now Okay, this was just a little sign that I purchased at Walmart and I want to tell you two different things first one thing that you could do is you could stencil this on here and then add your embroidery hoop. And you could uh, jazz it up however you wanted. That's one thing I've seen. And I, I really like it when people do a bunch of like um, greenery in the bottom corner. So that's one thing you could do. Another thing you can do is take your stenciled um, canvas or whatever you did. You can also use vintage dictionary paper or sheet music, all that kind of stuff too. This says, her children rise up and call her blessed. 
Isn't that cute? And I love the little green off to the side. So I could attach this to my sign. I don't know where to hold it in. And hang this on the wall. And I would probably jazz it up with a bow or something, either up here or in the bottom corner. I would probably do it up at the top. What do you guys think? I haven't read any of the comments. This is one of those days where I I had a handyman come over to help me change the um, the hanging light over the kitchen table and the hanging light, or not the hanging light, the vanity light in this main floor bathroom. And that took like two and a half hours. And he was having me help him and hold it. So that set my whole day behind. And um, anyways, I love this. I love this idea. This piece, like I said, came from Walmart, and it was around $9. And if I stencil, stencil on this and then put a hoop on there, I can wash it off if I use chalk paste and do something different. Or if I use one of these and I just put a little dab of glue on it to hold it, I can take this off and change it out to something different whenever I want. Um... Walmart also had these, which are pretty. And I have another project that I, I stenciled before I came live. So don't leave me yet because we're gonna do one too. Um, and it's this right here. It's this larger hoop. And this is the project. Grateful, thankful, blessed. I did this just with the black and the magnolia green. And I'm kind of thinking that I might come back and glue some vintage cream colored buttons around it. If I do, we'll do it as a live tomorrow. I'm going to think about it tonight and plan. Um, so I'm just going to lay my, this is dry and ready to go. I'll try to get it centered as best I can. I like this thing off to the right side. So as I'm pushing this down, I can see, do I need to go further to one direction or another? Tighten this up right now. And then we'll pull our fabric tight. Especially when you're working with these bigger hoops, you definitely need to do that. Okay, so I'm just going to tag a little bit right here to get that more taut. Look how cute that is. So I was thinking that I might put it here. And do a big green bow and this would be a pretty sign for my house but I think honestly that just this is lovely um, I would probably put a ribbon or something to hang it like this green color um, so okay so let's do the craft all right um, we're gonna do this one a child is born where did I put my fabric Oh gosh, did we cut it up already? We did, we did this one. So, you guys, I'm, I'm so discombobulated. Let's get a little more fabric. And I'll have to iron it later. Okay, the one thing I have learned for sure is that you wanna overestimate how big of a piece of fabric is that you need. And don't cut it too small. Or you'll be in that position I was with like with those ornaments. Okay. Now we're ready to go. And let's put this one to the side 
so I don't mess it up before it's dry. Um, okay, and I am just going to take my stencil off the backing and I always label it. This is part of the Christmas quads that I showed you. What I've used today are the snowflakes, the Christmas quads, the um, Proverbs 31, and then I showed you the Grateful, Thankful, Blessed. Those are all great stencil sets. Okay, and we're just gonna use the black chalk paste again. And I bet you somebody out there is wondering why is she using chalk paste and not ink? Is anyone wondering that? If you are, the reason is um, this is not gonna ever need to be washed. And also it's not gonna get handled a lot. So in that instance, it's okay to use chalk paste. It's not like it's a pillow that's going to be on the sofa and people are going to be leaning up against it. And it's not like I'm going to ever need to throw this in the washing machine. Um, so chalk paste is just a little easier for me to work with. And um, you don't have to heat set it. And with ink, after it's it's dry, it will remain kind of sticky until you heat set it. So it really does have to be heat set. Wow, that looks so good. A child is born. Okay, and I was gonna put it on this. And these would be super cute together, hanging a set of them. This one I'm using a bigger embroidery hoop. We're going to unscrew it. outside off and what do you guys think is this something that you would do um, and what would you what would your uh, preferred thing to do it on be would you prefer to do it on drop cloth on burlap on paper like uh, encyclopedia or book pages or what do you think that you would like the best And there we go. And I would probably add something like this to it. So let me review. I'll show you all the projects one more time. I will also take pictures and put them here in the comments. I hope you guys know to look for those, to look for the pictures of the completed projects in the comments. And then also I'll put them just on the DIY Dreaming uh, Facebook page. So. The first project I showed you was this pocket, which is made with a large embroidery hoop, some burlap. You essentially make a pocket and then you put the outside over the top of it. And this is just painter's drop cloth with a little bit of my favorite lace from Walmart. And it could hold whatever you want, your grocery shopping list, um, pins, your glasses. It could hold mail, it could hold bills. And I had mine just sitting in a little stand like this. It's going to go in my kitchen next to the door and next to where the phone used to be. And then I showed you this one. And we talked about putting this inside. Where did that go? Of something like this. Or putting it on a wreath like this. I mean, it could be a bigger wreath too. And then um, I showed you guys, let's see, the ornament that I made. And I love these little teeny, teeny ones. I'm going to do a whole bunch of ornaments this year for my tree using this um, canvas material because it's, so it's so nice and crisp. The stencils come out so great. And then the last one was this. Grateful, thankful, blessed. So if you guys want to look at any of those stencils, um, I did put a link at the bottom of the page. It's diydreaming.magnoliadesignco.com. If you have questions, tell me in the comments. Um, if you want to see the next video that I do, or the next five or ten or a hundred of them, 
either give me some hearts or thumbs up or say something in the comments because that engagement is how Facebook decides that you want to receive my content or not. Um, feel free to sprinkle. What else? Um, if you want a link like specific to the Christmas quads or the grateful, thankful, blessed stencil or something like that, um, just let me know in the comments and I can just go grab it for you so you don't have to go to the website and hunt around. Did I wash the material? No, I did not. I did iron it though. Um, and there's no reason to wash it before you do your project. There really isn't because uh, it's not like it's going to get used um, and it'll look nicer the first go around before you wash it. Alrighty, guys. Thanks for joining me. Have a great rest of the day. I don't know what we're going to do tomorrow. We might do a little bit more with this and then work on those, that teacup and coffee cup that I showed you guys yesterday. And, oh my word, I have too many crafts that I want to do and not enough time. But we'll do something fun for sure. So I hope you'll join me here at DIY Dreaming and I will see you guys later.